Hey guys, this is Connor Juno, Mo Jian Dian Bing. So today, I have my LK Chen Song Hen Dao here, and I want to talk about the pommel because I made a review video which you guys should check out if you haven't seen it already. But in that video, I mentioned you know this thing has a ring pommel. I'm not going to talk too much about ring pommels. Now is the time I'm going to talk about ring pommels. So the day has arrived. <laughs> the big thing about ring pommels is that it's debated about why they exist and where they come from, what they're for. There's kind of three main arguments that you'll hear, and I'm just going to kind of go over some of those and then talk about what I think. And these aren't in particular order of like strength of argument or anything. The first one is people will say that the ring pommel was made or used during the Han Dynasty so that, you know, in the armory where they store a lot of doll, they can kind of have a rod sticking out the wall and they can just slide a bunch of these things on here and efficiently store a whole lot of doll. The argument there is kind of like it's for storage, for racking on a on a post on a wall, sticking up a wall or something like that. I think that's definitely plausible. It's definitely something that could have been done, but I haven't seen, you know, definitive evidence for that being done. And most of the time when people talk about that, they'll talk about being a thing in the Han Dynasty, and I haven't seen anything from the Han Dynasty that suggests that that's was why they created this, you know, Huan Shou or ring pommel. The second reason that's pretty common about why people say there's a ring pommel on Chinese doll is because you you can have like a lanyard on it and you can put your wrist through the lanyard and then hold the handle of the sword. And that way, if you accidentally drop your blade, it's still attached to your wrist with the lanyard. Um, and there is some evidence for this, particularly in the Tang Dynasty, but... I, although there, that was definitely a thing that was done sometimes, it was definitely not done all the time. And I think it's a partial explanation, but it's not a complete picture of why we have a ring pommel. Now the third explanation that sometimes people mention is that it's for possibly for some type of special grip. Like perhaps you grip the blade, you know, down here, or you might put your fingers in the ring as you're holding it. and Honestly, with these ones, I'm not, I'm not too convinced because this is just, um, it's just not a very comfortable way to grip the blade and manipulate it. So, what do I think ring pommels were for, and why are they a thing on Chinese swords? This might be a little bit of a surprise to hear, but I think that ring pommels are mostly a thing on most Chinese swords in history, just because it's carrying on tradition during the Shang Dynasty, which is really really old like 1600 BC it's whenever China first starts using like um, copper currency and and you know bronze currency and stuff like that during that time there were a few different kinds of currency that popped up like before they started using bronze they actually were using things like shells and so they started making bronze shells instead of using real shells and another thing that also <laughs> And this wasn't the only kind of object that became bronze for money. There's also um, bronze knives. At one point it was a knife and it became a currency. Where you have these little coins that are looking, they look kind of like a bronze knife. and they But they don't actually have an edge and sometimes they have characters on them that says how much it's worth and stuff like that. But they all have a ring at the end of the handle. And that, I believe is primarily because <laughs> you're using like you're stringing a bunch of these coins on a on a like on a string cuz you're you know you're sliding a bunch of these coins on a string and you're holding it and you're like looping it to your belt or something like that so you can carry a string of cash in early china a lot of forms of currency were actually you know you know looped or put on a string like this because it's just a convenient way to carry a bunch of coins and you can count them easily because you can say well here's 10 a string of 10 or a string of 100 or whatever i think that these whenever these small knives started to become a currency is whenever the ring pommel first came about on chinese doll we go even further and we look at the you know form and shape of the doll bi or the knife coin then it actually resembles very closely the Han Dynasty, you know, Huan Shou Dao, or the Ring Pommel Dao of the Han Dynasty. Basically, they just take that, you know, coin form, that knife form, and it becomes, they kind of stretch it out, make it out of steel, and it becomes the 
the Huan Shodao of the Han Dynasty. In my own opinion, I believe that the Ring Pommel is mostly a tradition that was carried on in China from stringing these Dao Bi, these knife coins. Sometimes we might see the Ring Pommel being used for a lanyard, but it isn't all the time. And, you know, sometimes, like on this particular thing, the Song Shou Tao, it's kind of just there because it can be, because it's a tradition. <laughs> And it, this tradition continues on, you know, all the way up. It goes from, you know, way back in the Bronze Age all the way up to the 20th century with the Da Dao. Most of the time, the ring is not serving a practical function. It might on particular instances in history, and it's important to recognize that the function of the ring can change over time and in different circumstances. But most of the time, I believe that it's just a tradition that's been carried on. Thanks everyone for watching, please subscribe, and don't forget to stay sharp.